All right, here's the first part of the review of the story problems. Martin can clean a room in 60 minutes. John can clean the same room in 40 minutes. How long will it take them to clean the room together? Now, if you haven't already tried this problem, try it first, stop the video, and then you can check to see if you've done this, this work correctly. In fact, the first two uh, problems are very, very similar. So if you can do problem one, you should have no problem uh, working problem two. But I'm going to uh, give you a chance to make sure you've tried problem one first before, you, uh, before we go any further. So try that first and hit pause. Okay, here we go. Martin can clean a room in 60 minutes. John can clean the same room in 40 minutes. How long will it take them to clean the room together? Well, that's my unknown. I'm going to let T be the time working together. Now, this is called a work word problem. And the trick with the work word problem is that you have two more people doing this job together. They're each going to do a fraction of the job. They might both do half the job. And then that way you can see that one, this, uh, Matt did the job, half the job, and John did half the job. One job is done. But since Martin is a little slower than John here, because it takes him 60 minutes to clean the room, they're not going to do exactly half of the work. Uh, John's going to do a little bit more because he works a little bit faster. So what you want to do is figure out what fraction John does, what fraction Martin does, add them together, set it equal to one job done, set it equal to one. Now to find out the fraction of the job that each one of these people can do, you have to think about, alright, Martin can get the job done in 60 minutes. If he works for one minute, he gets one sixtieth of the job done. If he works for two minutes, he gets two sixtieths of the job done. If he works for T minutes, Martin gets T sixtieths of the job done. John, on the other hand, can get the whole thing done in 40 minutes. If he works for one minute, he gets one fortieth of the job done. Two minutes, two fortieths of the job done. T minutes, T fortieths of the job done. So this is the fraction of the job that Martin can do. This is the fraction of the job that John does. And if we add those together, we get one job done. That's how these problems work. Now you can have all sorts of uh, variations of this. You can have one person start the job earlier or you maybe you know how long they can work uh, get the job done working together but you don't know Martin or John's individual time but in this case and he hasn't had anything like that in this case it's the time working together over the individual time that's how you get the fraction of the job this is for Martin this is for John now I'm going to solve this equation by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator which is 120 120 times the left side and 120 times the right side. So I distribute here. This is going to 60 is going to cancel once, going to go in twice. That's going to be 2t plus 40 is going to go into that once. 40 is going to go into that three times. So that'll be 3t and then 120. Now it's a much simpler equation to solve. 5t equals 120. Divide both sides by 5. t is equal to 24. T is the time working together. The question is asking, how long will it take them working together? So uh, together, it will take them 24 minutes to clean the room. It's a story problem, so you should write the answer out in a short sentence. And don't forget to put your units. In this case, it's minutes. If you just wrote down 24, uh, you know, whoever's grading it won't know if you meant 24 minutes, 24 hours, 24 apples. This problem is almost identical to this problem, so um, if you didn't get this one done, after seeing this one work, stop the video, try this problem, and then put the video back on to see how you did. So I'm going to go pause for a second, and then I'm going to go ahead and work it out. Again, you can pause the video if you need. Alright, Matt can paint the fence in 20 minutes. Marty can paint the same fence in 40 minutes. Uh, how long will it take them, that's, a, that's an I there, how long will it take them to paint the fence together? So again, just like the last problem, T is the time working together. Okay, and we're going to figure out the fraction of the job that each one can do. We'll start with Matt. Matt can paint the fence in 20 minutes. If he works one minute, he gets tw one twentieth of the job done. Two minutes, two twentieths of the job done. T minutes, he gets T twentieths of the job done. In like manner, Martin can do the, the same fence and paint it in 40 minutes. So if he works for T minutes, that's T 40 of the job done. And the two people working together will get one job done. So I'm going to multiply 2 by my LCD, which is 
four, 40 this time. So 40 times the left side and 40 times the right side gives me, distribute here, that's going to go in once, go in twice, that's 2t plus 1t or t is equal to 40. Combine like terms, 3t is equal to 40, you can see it come. Divide both sides by 3, t equals 40 over 3, but since it's a story problem, you don't want to write your answer as a, an improper fraction. Go ahead and change this to a mixed number. Don't use a decimal. Change to, you know, use a fraction. This goes in 13 times with one left over. So working together, they can paint the fence. Oop, fence. And 13 and one third minutes. Again, don't forget your units. All right, now, that's one style of problem. I, I, it just sounds like he's going to have at least one of these on your next quiz or test. So make sure you practice this, you know, and, and find more examples if you need to. You can go online, find other uh, videos that work problems just like this. Just type in algebra, uh, word problems, work word problems. You'll find all sorts of examples online. Problem number three. This has to do, uh, in fact, all four of these problems that are on the board here have to do with two vehicles in two different cities that travel towards one another. In the first two problems, they're, they're, uh, they leave at the same time, and then we're interested in when they will pass each other. So the amount of time that each one travels is the same. Uh, in problem three, you've got a truck and you've got a car. So the amount of time that the truck travels is going to equal the amount of time that the car travels. Similar down here, you have a bus and a van. But in problems five and six, they leave at different times. So the amount of time it takes for them to travel is different. So like in the first problem, or in problem five here, it says, at noon a car leaves uh, city A going to city B. All right, that's a car. So uh, at 1 p.m. the truck leaves city B going to city A. So that's an hour later. So if T is the amount of time that the car travels, an hour later means t minus one, one less hour of travel time. So you have to keep track of the travel time because the key here is distance equals rate times time. If I multiply the rate of the uh, vehicle times the time of travel, I'll get how far the, the vehicle travels. Now picture what's going on here. They're going from city A to city B. They're traveling towards one another. So I'll put it down here. Here's city A, here's city B. The car goes this way, was it a, no, the truck goes this way, the car comes this way. Eventually, they pass one another. So the distance that this car travels, um, car, and the distance that this truck travels, will add up to be the distance between the cities. In the first example here, the distance between the cities is 810 miles. So I'm going to let T, the unknown here is the time travel, I'm going to let T be the time of traveling, or the time traveled, let's just put it that way. Now remember, rate times time is distance. So for car, or for truck A that's leaving city uh, A to going to city B headed this way, he goes 70 miles an hour for T hours. So the distance would be 70 times T. Okay. For the car, he goes 65 miles an hour, leaving city B going this way to city A, and he travels for T hours, so he, rate times time, is 65 T. And if we add these two distances together, we get the distance between the cities. So 70 T plus 65 T is going to be 810. That's how all these problems are going to work. You're going to add the... Um, the distance that the first vehicle travels added to the distance of the second vehicle, you're going to get the distance between the cities. The real difference in the problems here is these two, they start at the same time, and those two, they don't start at the same time. 70t plus 65t is 135t. There's not even any fractions that you have to divide by. Just divide, by, in this case, by 135. And if I'm not mistaken, it goes in six times. So. T is the time traveled. How, after how much time will the two automobiles pass each other? Six hours. So the two automobiles pass.
pass each other after six hours. Okay, and that's your answer. Don't forget your units. All right, we have a very, very similar problem here, but we have a bus that leaves from City A traveling to City B at 60 miles an hour. In fact, I'm going to just use the same little diagram I have up here because the uh, same two cities, cities A and B. Uh, we have a bus that's going this way, traveling at 60 mile an hour. At the same time, a van leaves city B, headed for city A, coming this way, going 65 miles an hour. So, distance equals rate times time. This guy's going 60 miles an hour. We're gonna let T be the time traveled. Just like we did the last time. So this guy's gonna go 60 T, 60 mile an hour, rate times time, and the van's going to go 65 T. And that would be this distance, and that would be this distance, and combine, if we add them together, we are going to get the distance the two cities are apart, which in this problem, different from the last one, 1,125 miles. So 60 T plus 65 T is equal to 1,125. Now, uh, 60t plus 65t is 125t. Divide by 125. And I believe it's going to be 9. So this is going to be 9 hours. So they're traveling for quite some time. The distance between the cities, yeah, it's quite a distance apart. After how much time will the two uh, automobiles pass each other? After 9 hours, the automobiles pass each other. Okay, now I didn't really give you a, a space of time in there, but I'm thinking by now you know to stop it after the first video. Try this one. Same thing over here. I'm going to work this one out first. If you haven't done this one, try it first, then watch the video. But before you watch the video on this problem, you should definitely try it because it's going to be so similar to this one, it should fall apart for you. And then, of course, you can watch it worked out. So here, uh, at noon, a car leaves City A, headed for City B. So we still got this, here's City A, here's City B. One car, one's going this way, one's going this way. But the car that leaves City A leaves at noon, and at 60 mile an hour. We're still using distance equals rate times time, but this guy doesn't start, the, the truck doesn't start at the same time. It's like he's given the car a head start. This guy's already traveled some, he's still sitting there. He's traveled for an hour. And at uh, 60 mile an hour, he's got a 60 mile head start. Then this guy starts traveling, and this guy's still traveling, and then this guy's traveling before they meet and pass one another. So we're still gonna add the two distances to one another like we did in these two examples, and we're still gonna set it equal to the distance that the cities are apart, because it says the distance between city A and city B is 1,185 miles. After how much time will the two vehicles pass each other? Well, we have to be careful with the way we state the answer because it says after how much time do they mean with respect to city, you know, the car or with respect to the truck? So we'll put, make sure that our answer is proper. So uh, I am going to let B T be the time traveled by the car since that's the first vehicle. This guy gets an hour later start, so he only travels for T minus one hours. Time traveled by the, what was it, a truck. Now, distance times, uh, rate times time equals distance, so this is the rate of the car, and this is the time traveled, so he goes 60 times T. This is the rate of the truck, and this is the time traveled, so he goes 65, and you better use parentheses, t minus 1. Now the two distances add up to 1185. It's just an extra step or two of algebra here. So I'm going to add these together. I'm going to add, add these together. I'm going to add 60t plus 65 times t minus 1. And I'm going to get 1185. Oops, 1185. Let's try that again. So you can read it at least 1185. Now I'm going to solve this equation for t. I'm going to distribute over here. I get 60t plus 65t minus 65. 
equals 1185. I'm going to combine like terms. 125t minus 65 equals 1185. I'm going to add 65 to both sides. I get 125t is equal to 0, carry 1, 5, carry 1, 2, 1. I'm going to divide this all for t by 125, and you can see it, I hope you can see it coming, t is 10. It goes in 10 times. Now that means t, which is the time traveled by the car, is 10 hours. So the car travels for 10, the truck travels for 9, it says after how much time will the two automobiles pass each other, well you either have to say after 10 hours when the car leaves, or after 9 hours when the truck leaves. Or you can say since they stay at noon, and it's 10 hours later, it'd be 10 p.m. So the two automobiles pass each other at 10 p.m. Now, I know that this is a 10 and that's a 10. You think, oh, whatever this is, just put a p.m. or an a.m. after it. Well, they left at noon. If they had left at a different time, you know, you add the 10 hours to that time. And there's the answer here. So try the next one. It's pretty similar to this one uh, that I just worked. Okay, we have at 4 p.m. a van leaves City A headed for City B. There we go again. There's City A. Here's City B. We got a van that's going this way at 4 p.m. traveling 60 miles an hour. At 6 p.m., that's two hours later, a truck leaves City B and it's headed for City A traveling at 80 miles an hour. The distance between the two cities is 1,100 miles after how much time will the two automobiles pass each other. So this guy gets a head start of two hours this way, and before this guy starts taking off, and then he's going, and then he's going, and you know, eventually they will pass one another, they'll meet or pass one another. So we have to find the distance traveled by each vehicle. We'll start with the van. I don't know the time, so I'm going to let T be the time traveled by the van. I, I know the rate, distance is rate times time, the uh, van's going 60 mile an hour for T hours. That would be 60 T. On the other hand, leaving City B, going to City A two hours later, so that would be two hours less than the van. Time traveled by the, what was it, a car? It was a truck would be T minus two, and he's going 80 miles an hour. So rate times time, so that would be 80 times t minus 2. And that's the distance that the, uh, the truck travels. And we add those together and we get the distance between the cities, which is 1,100 miles. So now I add these together, just so similar to what I just did there. And I set it equal to the distance apart, which is 1,100. I have to distribute, solve, just like I did in the last problem, very similar. I'm going to combine like terms. I get 140t minus 160 is 1100. I'm going to add 160 to both sides. And I get 140t is equal to 1260. I'm going to divide by 140. And I get t is equal to, I believe it goes in nine times. Yes, it does. So that's nine hours. T is the time traveled by the van. That's nine hours after the van leaves at four in the afternoon. So nine hours later, that'd be one in the morning. At nine hours on the 4 p.m. So I just have to answer it after how much time will the two vehicles pass each other. The two automobiles will pass each other. at 1 a.m. Now, if that's not what the, uh, the, uh, your teacher is asking for, if they want to know how much time, then you're going to have to say something like nine hours after the van left the city. Nine hours after the van left city A. Just like back here, if, they, if he wants the actual amount of time that passes, then what we have to say is 10 hours after the car leaves City A. Um, 10 hours after the car leaves City A. 
car leaves city A. Perhaps that's how he wants you to write the answer. I, I suspect because he gives you starting times that they probably want the actual time that you would see if you looked at your watch. All right, that's your story problems. There's six of them, but there's really just three sets of two because of the similarity. Make sure that you practice these so that you feel comfortable with all three types.